Today I'll show you how you can create multiple surveys with just a single fill-out form and Airtable. We will also send it out to multiple people and track their responses. Stick around. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated. On this channel, we are helping you to automate your business workflows. If you are new here, consider subscribing to get the latest updates on the latest tools, or even joining our channel to get a wide range of membership-only perks. See more about the perks on the channel homepage. One of our clients needed to collect feedback for the training program that they were running. So they were having multiple sessions with the same questions, pretty much the same questions after each one of the sessions. And they needed to send it out to all the people that were participating in that program. And they needed to make sure that they all filled out those questions. So we decided to use in this case, fill out, which is amazing form builder. So in this video, we'll show you how we have set up Airtable to solve for this how we have created an automation that can be used to send out customized survey links to each of the participants. And finally, how you can set up reusable forms inside of Fillout. So if you're not familiar with Fillout, uh, you can find the link to Fillout in the description of this video. It is a form builder that is really well integrated with Airtable and has some like amazing features that we are going to be using in this video. But apart from Airtable, they are also introducing many interesting features. So definitely this is something that is worth checking out. But just the integrations with Airtable are pretty much the, 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 the killer feature of, of this form builder. So this is what we are going to be using for this video. And for that, we are also going to be using our um, Airtable here. And you can see that we have set up Airtable here to contain the list of the participants. So you can see that I have multiple participants for divided into different groups. You can see that here I'm also having groups depending whether this is communication to everyone or whether this is group one, group two, group three. And you can see that in each of the group, basically I am assigning specific people. All of them have my email address so I don't spam anyone with the email. Uh, so this is the groups. And the reason for having groups is that we can send out email with the survey to everyone inside of the group over here. Now, the next element here are the sessions. So you can see that we have individual sessions. Each of the sessions will have a description and this is the, the title of the session. And you can see that we're using this title over here. And the next one is this kind of general description. So this general description, this is something that we have over here. And then we have also added something which is a, a free form question. And you also see how we're using this in fill out. And so this is the description part over here. Here we are deciding to which of the group groups we would like to send it, whether we want to send it to all, whether we want to send it out to group one, two or three. I'm going to select group number three because this is the smallest group. Here, I'm also having a link for which form I would like to use. So this is designed to be used with one certain form, but you can also change this and you can have another form. If you would at some stage decide that you would like to have a different form, you can use a different link. At the moment, I'm reusing the same link. You would, if you would like to use the same link all the time, you can, for example, add this as a default. So if you put this as a default, every new record that you create will have the same link, but it also gives you the freedom to change this. All right, so this is the formal link. Before we show you how to create this form link, let's go to this final uh, survey result tab. So you will see that in the survey result, this is actually the place where we are gathering the results of the surveys. And you will see that for every submission, we have the name of the session for which it was sent out. We have who is filling out the survey. So you can you can also make it anonymous, but in this case, if you'd like to have it personalized, you can. And the value for us was to make it personal so that we know who has filled it out and who didn't. And here we have basically the, the answers for those questions. So for example, thanks to that, you are also able to have a field where you have to have a view where you can filter out by value that is mandatory over here, which is called value of the training. And you can see that all those people 
didn't uh, provide any responses. So these are the answers. And here again, this is where we have copied over this link automatically from the automation. And I'll show you how this is done. And I will in a second explain why we have here one more link with an ID where we are attaching the ID of this current record to the form that was provided over here. So now let's dive into an automation that we have built for that. So the automation works this way that whenever the action on the survey, so whenever you select the button over here and you decide to take action, send the survey, whenever you set this to send survey, the first step will be that we will search within our participants for anyone who belongs to this specific group. So anyone who belongs to group three would be located over here. The next step is we are basically changing this to action sent. So this way, you know that this has done something. I would prefer this to actually be after this flow, but this is not possible and I don't want to be executing this multiple multiple times, uh, but in general, it, it works. So there shouldn't be an issue. So the next step that we are doing here for each person that we have found over here, we take two actions. Action number one is within the survey result, we add a new row. So over here, we would be adding new row and this row would be a row that is linking basically the, the person that we have found in here. So the participant, their ID over here. So you can see this right here in the current item because we are iterating over the list of users. You can find this as an Airtable record ID of the current item because these are people. Then the next would be the session. Here in the session, this is not coming from here. This is actually coming from this trigger record. And then this is the Airtable ID of the other one. It might look the same here, but these are not the same value. So like this is the value that would come, oh, sorry, I'm not even saying from here. It should be from the record that triggered this because we have triggered this in the surveys uh, table. From the session table, we'll take the ID of that session and put it over here. And then the next step, we are just copying the link that we had on that session to the field. So you can see that basically what it does, it just copies this link from here to this field and adds the link to the user. So we can test it out on the next one, send survey. You can see that we have created those records over here. So now we have a dedicated form for session six. One more important hint when you are setting up the email here, when you're sending the email to, this would come from the item you are iterating over. So this is the current item. But when you are attaching the link that they should use for the survey to add the personalized link, you would use actually the previous item over here, create a record. And from here, you would use this computed field, which is form with link ID. So this is only generated at this stage. So just make sure that you're taking it from this stage. And this will give you the link of that specific form for that specific user. All right, so now how this form is created. So we will go to fill out and I'll show you how this is being created from the scratch so that you can see that this is really, really straightforward. Let's create form from the scratch. I have already connected Airtable over here. If you have not connected Airtable, you have to authenticate Airtable to, uh, to fill out. And you can see that you can start the blank form, use a template or connect it with a third party app. So this is what we are going to do. We're going to create it with Airtable. There's many, many other um, tools that you can use it with. So if you're not using this with Airtable, you could also do it in Notion or Google Sheets. And inside of Airtable, we are going to select our team and we're going to press next. And here from the connection, we already have a connection over here. We're going to reuse it and we're going to select the base. We only have this base over here for the table. We are going to select the survey result and then we're going to create form. And you will see how easy it is to create. So I'm just drag and dropping it here. I'll just call it so that you can see that this is a different form. And now we are just going to drop the participant and we're going to drop the session. We are going to hide this. So in the logic, always hidden. And for the remaining parts, you can basically drop them over here. So this is the value, enjoyment from the session, tell us more. We'll make this value mandatory over here. We can also make the other ones values mandatory here. 
And the next element here is the freeform question right here. And at the moment, if you look at this, it doesn't look too good, but let's exit preview and let's do one more thing. Inside of integrate, instead of creating new submissions, we'll go into the Airtable and we'll click into the um, connect to your Airtable. Instead of creating new record, we'll change this to update new record. So you will see this is where the formula came from. This is why we are adding the ID and the record, but instead of hard coding the form URL, we are just having this as a text field here. So coming back, coming back here, we change this to update. So this is why we're not creating actually new records whenever the form is filled out. We're just updating the existing rows. All right, so let's update this. And now let's go back to edit. And this allows us to do some interesting things. So now I'll add the heading, which is the actual heading that we want to use. When you type at, you see that you actually have access to the session over here. Once you click continue, you can see the details of that record. So you can actually drill down to what that form contains. So this is why we're going to add a name and this will show us the name of the session. We might not see this straight away until we select a record over here. So we can select a sample here and this will give you a view how this will look like. So you can see based on a sample of a record, this is going to look this way. This is great for building. Now, the next element over here, we're going to add a, a paragraph. And in the paragraph, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to do basically session and we're going to do the description. We could also add, for example, here participant and we could also have the name of the participant and we could say hello and the name of the participant. And you can see that we have also a personalized form right now. So this is fantastic. Let's add one more thing here. So when we have a free form questions here, this is where, where we would like to adjust the value of the questions for every session. So on the sessions, we have a free form questions. So here on the sessions, you can see that we have a free form questions for every session. So this is like a specific question to that, that session. So now we have added this question over here and let's do preview one more time. And you can see that for session five, which was about bubble is what are the features of the tool that we discussed that you would find most compelling. If we change this to, for example, session three and other records over there, you can see now this is Robert Martinez, but this is question about how, what concepts were you finding difficult to understand? And this is about session three. Okay. So this is pretty much it. At this stage, what you would do, you would press publish and over here you would get a full link for that form because we are already reusing this in our formula over there. So actually, once we go to Airtable, if we would like to reuse this for next session, we would not select, we would not copy paste everything. We would, we would delete the final part and just keep the plain link. So you can see if we open the plain link, it will not contain anything because it's not linked to the record that we are updating over there. So now let's send it out. I'll send out to group three because it's a smaller group, send survey. And now we can see that these values are being created. So we can, for example, select here form for Thomas and submit response from Thomas. So now we will see that this has been updated for that specific user. Note that you can also use the same form to basically change the responses. So if you would click on it one more time, then you can edit this form one more time. Mainly the idea for this is that this is a great feature to edit existing records, but this way you can also make sure that everyone who was supposed to fill out the survey gets dedicated link and you can see whether they have filled out or not. And if they didn't, you can also create another automation to send them a reminder that they should send it out. All right. I hope this was useful for you guys. So please let me know what other topics you would like to hear about. And I hope this will save you lots of time. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.